Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine 2.3. In this video, I'm going to talk about understanding white space within Harlow 3. One of the most commonly misunderstood aspects of using the Harlow story format is in how it understands white space within passages. Now, in this context, white space is spaces, line breaks, and other symbols that show up as white space within stories. So things like the space between words and the space between sentences. These are all examples of white space, areas within this content that don't have anything but are actually symbols behind the scenes, spaces, line breaks, things like that, but can sometimes show up as extra space we don't necessarily want. One of the most common examples comes from using macros in a passage. Macros, as they appear in the passage editor view, take up space. As we're writing them, they take up space within the editor. And so as they are run, they also take up the same space. So we see that here. There are actually multiple macros being run back here in the background, but we just see one result, but they take up the same space. And so this is an example of using macros, writing them within the passage editor view, but that they take up space when we see them within when we're viewing the story. So these are examples of white space we don't necessarily always want. Sometimes it's extra white space. Harlow provides syntax to help with collapsing this white space. The opening and closing curly brackets around any macros will collapse their space. So around all of the content, we can make multiple, multiple, multiple macros, calls, do things, do complex calculations, but using opening and closing curly brackets around them will collapse all of that extra white space into a single line or a single space. And we see that right here. Now we see the same 27. In the previous passage, we saw it was multiple lines. Now it is a single line at just a 27. So we collapse all that white space. So what about line breaks? Sometimes longer lines need to be run together. Using the forward slash causes all text on its line to run into the next. Frequently, this can help when using macros to help prevent lines from breaking. And we actually see the same thing again. We see 27 here on a lines by itself similar to in the previous passage, a line by itself 27. These are two different techniques to think about collapsing white space. We can collapse the white space or we can actually stop lines from breaking and combine things together, run them all together. Let's look at this code. So as we saw here, if we use multiple macros within a passage, we see they take up the same space. As we write them within the passage editor view, they also show up when we run the story as the same amount of space, one per line in this case. So sometimes we want that, but sometimes we don't. If we have a lot of complex calculations going on, or we have a lot of different macros we're setting up to do something, we don't necessarily want it taking up a lot of space within a story. It's not as aesthetically pleasing. So if we have that extra white space and we want to do something with it, the first thing we can do is collapse it. Now we do this, as I mentioned, with opening and closing curly brackets around those, and it will collapse all of it together. And so we can use this approach if we have a whole bunch of calculations or we're using a whole bunch of macros for something, maybe setting up different things, we can collapse all of that together. And as we saw, it collapsed it down to a single line. Notice there was one line before and one line after, and it's single line of the result here using the text macro to perform some arithmetic and then give us the string result. So we can use this approach. If we have a whole bunch of things, like I said, we want to collapse all that down together. This is a very useful way to do that. We can also, though, think about it in terms of line breaks. And so that's the last approach. Using the forward slash, notice it's written right here as four different lines, but I'm using multiple uses of the forward slash to run this all together. And so that's another way to think about this. We can actually stop lines from breaking and run them all together and produce a similar effect. Notice this is three separate lines, but was condensed down to a single line when it was run. So we can think of it then as using the forward slash to help us when we're using multiple macros. Maybe we want to print something, maybe we want content to run together and not break up. This is one approach to do that. So we can think about using the forward slash to help with line breaks, running all things together if we need it, or if we have a whole bunch of stuff, we want to collapse all that white space together, we can use the opening and curly, opening and closing curly brackets. So we understand white space then within Harlow as sometimes something we want and sometimes something we don't want. 
if we want to create stuff that's more aesthetically pleasing, sometimes we want to collapse all that white space together. We want to do a whole bunch of code stuff, but we don't necessarily want all those spaces that code produces to show up within our text. And so we can use the opening and closing curly brackets around that to collapse it all down to a single thing. We can also use the forward slash to think about ways that we could put line breaks together and run content together as well. So there's a two different approaches to thinking about white space, being aware that as we use macros within Harlow, they take up space. And so sometimes if we want to be a little more aesthetically pleasing or be a little more aware of how a reader may think about our story as we're putting things into it, we can use these two different techniques to better organize and better design our layout for our readers. Thanks for watching.